The first item of the agenda is 4A, appointment to unscheduled vacant city council seat by council appointment or by adoption of an emergency ordinance setting the election date and the necessary resolutions calling a special election for the purpose of filling the vacant seat. Would you give us a, a report, please? Uh, yes, council members, as you obviously know, council member Asha resigned effective September 25th. You accepted her resignation on October 13th and declared her seat vacant. From that date on, you had 30 days in which to fill the vacancy by appointment, or you have to call a special election. You are here today to discuss the possible appointment. You have received 15 applications in addition to any contacts that you have had uh, individually. And what we have in terms of uh, the ordinance and resolutions, we have an, or uh, an emergency ordinance to set the date for an election should that be necessary. And we're recommending a date of March 16th. March. That, be, that it be scheduled for March 16th. However, you have the option of setting a different date if you so wish, uh, provided it's, it's set within a reasonable period of time. If you have questions on the resolutions or the ordinance, I'll be happy to answer them. Are there any questions of staff? Ms. Ebner? Yeah, I've gotten a lot of calls, and I'm sure many of my colleagues have as well, about appointing the fourth person in this election. And I had a brief conversation with Ms. Stewart, and it's my understanding that we can't do that. We have to appoint a breathing person as opposed to a slot, am I understanding that? That's correct. You have to appoint a person. And not a, a place in the election, right? Correct. Okay, thanks. May I ask the uh, city clerk or attorney, whoever is appropriate, what is a reasonable period of time? The clerk has suggested March 16th would be the earliest that her office, as I understand it, would feel comfortable having an election and getting it all together. But what if it was a week later or two weeks or something? Is there a reason? A week or two after that would not be a problem. I agree. Though I think one concern of Ms. Stewart's, Ms. Stewart had some concerns about the availability of the outside assistance we would need, and she could speak to that. But the week or two delay after that date is not a problem in itself. That's correct. There are two weeks, um, two Tuesdays in April, which would be appropriate if you so wanted to. And I believe they're April 3rd in... Um, I, it's either April 3rd and April 27th, or April 3rd and April 20th, but I think it's April 3rd and April 27th. Has anybody consulted calendars, for example, spring vacations, etc.? I would certainly hate to uh, inadvertently schedule an election during uh, spring break from Santa Monica schools or something to go out of town. And when does Easter fall? Uh, I just, actually, I just, the dates would, I'm sorry, let me just make a correction real quickly. It would either be April 6th of 1999 or April 27th of 1999. What? Those are Tuesdays in April. Well, Good, Good Friday is the 2nd of April. Uh, Orthodox Good Friday is the 9th. Passover is the 8th. Islamic New Year's is on the 17th. Yeah, mm -hmm. And March 1st is, is uh, Arab Purim. No. And the NBA season will probably start about April 1st. Yeah. <laughs> when does arena football start? I don't know. All right, so it sounds like if it came to, just, just so we wouldn't shock ourselves and do something that was on a holiday. Okay, any other questions of staff? Are there chits? Yes, there are quite a few. <laughs> I haven't counted them yet, but yes, you do. Okay. Well, uh, and how much time will each person have? Um, it's over the 15 minimum, so the, the time drops to two unless you decide otherwise. Okay. Two minutes each. Okay, I think we should call chits then. The speakers for this, I'm going to call the speakers for this item. If you could please line up. Uh, the first speaker is Joy Fulmer. 
followed by Jerry Rubin, Clarence John Heisler, and Janina Krupa. I think you need to set it for a few minutes. <laughs> Joy Fulmer. Um, yeah, here I am being tortured still. And I'm very, very sick. I've got croup or walking pneumonia or something. It's really four, going on four weeks. Um, I, on this, um, I think we should understand. Oh, by the way, uh, Monica Lewinsky makes inheritance too, and uh, so does Lorianne. Um, I think on this, what we should understand first, what the, uh, the election showed, I don't think it had so much to do with racism as civil rights. People felt they were losing way too many civil rights in all general. Um, I also think it's a lot of people feel the poor are being very slighted and there's very uh, great inequities anymore. Like I see, they keep trying to tell the interest in the bank uh, is because of the national debt paid off. Well, they're making refinances like mad. And uh, this uh, also might hurt the banks in the long run if it goes on long, like it did in the 80s. Uh, and people just don't believe in it. I think muni bonds have more to do with it uh, because it's the, and the fact that there's, uh, they have tax advantages and they're actually higher than what the banks are offering without tax advantages, which is very weird. Um, and also, I think the women are being slighted more, too, because women would have, uh, are poorer in general, uh, they would prefer less tax advantage and higher interest rate, and they seem to be doing that to, to lower the interest rates, giving tax advantages, and it hurts taxes, too. Um, as well, I think, too, that... Uh, Thank you. I, yeah. The next speaker... Sorry. It's Jerry Rubin. Uh, before you start, could I have the person that filled out a chit for the Pratt family come up and see me, please? I'm sorry, go ahead. Mr. Mayor, Council Members, Jerry Rubin. Santa Monica resident. I would urge you to support appointing someone tonight. I think we could save the city of Santa Monica a heck of a lot of money. And for whatever reason, when Council Member Greenberg decided to leave, it worked out in a way. This is a completely legal way and a, a very democratic way as well. That money could be spent on so many things, stopping gang violence in the community. My gosh, he could send it down to help the hurricane victims in Nicaragua. It doesn't have to be spent on another divisive election which could possibly divide the city. If democracy is speaking well, then it wouldn't be inappropriate to have the fourth place winner be placed on the council. And since you can't pick the fourth place winner, and that seems a little unfair since it hasn't been decided yet. It doesn't seem right. If, Mr. Mayor, you were to end up in fourth place, I think you should be appointed. If Richard Bloom ends up in fourth place, he should be appointed. But someone should be appointed, and it would be very appropriate that the fourth place winner would be appointed to the city council. A very democratic process, a very intelligent process, and one that would save the city money and do right for democracy in the city. Uh, someone had said it would be good to ask a woman. I think in the next election, all women should run. That you shouldn't undermine democracy and have someone that came in well behind the fourth place winner, man or woman, be appointed to the council at this point in time. Thank you very, very much. The next speaker is Clarence John Heisler, followed by Janina Krupa and Caldica Chubb. I am... Um would like to take the first minute of my time to uh, apologize uh, to a council member who uh, I uh, did not follow through. I hold you guys up to the highest standards. I harangue you all. And I did not come up to bat. So publicly, I would like to say I'm sorry to that council member. Um, old patterns 
came up out of the woodworks. And having said that, I would like to start on a new foot and try again uh, to better myself. Uh, so I'm sorry. <clears throat> having said that, I feel that the common sense thing to do here is to save the city of Santa Monica some money. Whatever laws need to be uh, adjusted or voted on to make this happen needs to happen. We have two qualified people that have run a very hard campaign and they're so neck and neck and we have a vacant seat available. We all know had Asha Greenberg resigned in the proper time the results could be exactly the way they are with those four people getting that office, but that did not happen. So what I'm asking the council members to do, however way it has to happen, however it can be done, this is not like we're building the pyramids here, we need to fill this vacancy tonight with somebody that the people and the public can say, yeah, that, that's fair, that's a fair thing to do. The alternative is, is that I may run for office. And you do not want me sitting up there. <laughs> the next speaker is Janina Krupa, followed by Keldika Chubb. How do you spell your name? Uh. Is Janina Krupa in the audience? Keldika Chubb is next, followed by Charles Hudgen and Karen Greenwald. Hi, my name is Kari Chubb. I'm a citizen of Santa Monica. I thank the council members for the privilege of addressing you. Again, I have to say that this direct connection with local governance is one of the great virtues of living in Santa, of living in Santa Monica. I deeply regret former councilperson Greenberg's decision to delay her resignation and thus force this uncomfortable political choice on you. If you fail to reach agreement tonight, you will burden us with a costly special election. But fortunately, you have the recent election to guide you. The voters spoke and they said that the choice for the council, not sitting now, is Richard Bloom. To fail to hear that voice does a big disservice to your electorate. Richard's, Richard is a responsible progressive, a homeowner like Mayor Holbrook, and a community leader with a record of service. I urge the council to respect the expressed wish of the voters, to avoid a potentially divisive and certainly expensive special election, to appoint Richard Bloom to the unscheduled vacant city council seat. Thank you very much. Charles Hudgen. Is Charles Hudgen in the audience? He doesn't want to speak. Karen, thank you. Karen Greenwald, followed by Edward Greenwald and Emily Hudgen. I'm Karen Greenwald. I reside in Santa Monica. I've been a resident here for many years. I've spoken before you on other issues when I felt it's extremely important and I feel that way tonight. I think you're, you're very lucky in the sense that you have a rare confluence of events. You have a recent election where the electorate and citizens of Santa Monica have given you guidance as to who should be appointed to the vacancy that's been created by uh, Asha Greenberg. Um, you also have the opportunity to be fiscally responsible. Um, a special election could cost the city as much as $150,000. And I think you all can agree that that money could be better spent uh, applying it to crime prevention or providing other benefits to citizens of Santa Monica. I urge you to listen to the voters of, of Santa Monica who have given you a, a clear voice stating that Richard Bloom would be an appropriate candidate for appointment to Asha Bring Greenberg's vacant seat. In making such an appointment, you would show that you support the democratic process and you would make people feel that their vote really does count. So I urge you to appoint Richard Bloom. The next speaker is Karen Greenwald, followed by Edward Greenwald and Emily Hodging. Good evening. Uh, I have to agree with my wife. I would hope that, <laughs> well, but I would also hope that you all would agree with the voters of Santa Monica. We did uh, uh, raise our, con our point, our confidence in four people who ran for the office. It was very obvious which four the electorate really wanted in this position. It's very important to the city. 
Um, the money that would be spent on this election, and I'm, again, I'm echoing what my wife said in the previous speakers, can be used for a lot more, uh, for a better purpose than simply having an election when we don't know when it's going to be, sometime in April, maybe time arena football or whatever. Uh, you folks need to take the, the bulls by the horn. And uh, I think uh, appointing Richard Bloom at this time would be the appropriate thing to do. I believe, uh, despite what uh, Council Member Ebner said, I think it can be done. I work for a government jurisdiction myself, and the City Council always finds a way to get something done if they really want it done. The voters of uh, Santa Monica wanted uh, Richard Bloom. Not as many as should have, but quite a few. I think you should uh, listen to those voters. Please listen to us. Thank you. Emily Hutchin, followed by Allison Phelps and Jennifer Palamas. Good evening. I'm Emily Hodgen. I've lived at 2428 23rd Street in Santa Monica for 42 years. It is so unfortunate that this seat, by design, was not offered to the electorate. Still, it was an option, and it was not taken. The voters have spoken loud and clear in this election as to which of the many candidates that ran, which ones they chose to be on city council. Indeed, three of the top runners ran neck to neck, each one gaining 10,000 plus votes. If one with 10,000 plus is honorable to sit there, and a second with 10,000 plus is honorable to sit there, then surely the other 10,000 electorate shouldn't be ignored. This year, from the speaker in the house, the White House that is, to the dog catcher in small town America, from a boxer in California to a wrestler in Minnesota, the people are saying, we want to choose. It is our right to choose. We are the ones that do that, not you. We vote to give ourselves power, not you. We vote to have our agendas addressed, not yours further. It is our voice that should be heard whenever possible. I believe it's possible for you to do that tonight and place one of the top runners in this empty seat. I know you can work this out. You know you can work this out if you choose. The ball is in your court. It's the right and honorable thing to do. It will honor the electorate. It will add considerable um, credibility to everybody sitting on, on the council. And I know all of you are concerned about that credibility. So let's see you do it, OK? The next speaker is Allison Velks, followed by Jennifer Palamas and Ronald Roos. Good evening, council members. Thank you for allowing me to speak. I faxed in a letter, and I faxed in a letter from my husband who's in Washington, D.C., or else he would be here tonight. You'll see him next year permanently. Um, we usually don't agree on anything, but this is one thing we both agree on. Um, we both really believe in the democratic process. You may not know this, but my husband came from South Africa to escape our Parthage. He came to California. He's lived in Santa Monica ever since he came to this country. He's always voted once he became a citizen, and he really believes that people should make the choice. I believe behind him, we are not the same party. We usually zero each other out. But in this case, we both voted for Richard Boom. We both think that since he, the people did too, and they made him number four, he should be number four. We ask that you make this consideration. I ask for myself as a homeowner. I'm not a member of any small faction. I'm a registered Democrat. My husband is a member of the Green Party. But as I said before, we agree on Richard. Um, we just think so highly of the man um, that I would do anything to get him elected. Um, and maybe in a few years you'll see my husband sitting behind the council seat and you'll vote for him too. So please put Richard in and I will be happy to make a phone call to DC tonight and say that you're in agreement, so thank you. Jennifer Palamas followed by Ronald Roos and Judy Abdo. I'm Jennifer Palamas, I'm an 18 year Santa Monica resident. Each one of you was elected to sit up here and guide the city and when a vacant seat happens between elections. I think an appointment is a difficult process. 
we need to decide not only who would be qualified, but who the voters might choose, because in those instances, you serve as a proxy for the voters. This is a very unusual situation, because the vacancy comes directly at the time of an election, when you have the word of the voters already. I urge you to be statespersons and not politicos tonight. This is not because I'm a longtime Richard Bloom supporter. As a matter of fact, if this situation were to repeat itself with some other people in these places, in these spots, in two years or in four years, even, for example, people that I have not supported in the past, for example, if in two years the same situation happens and it is Mr. Rosenstein who is in the spot that Richard Bloom is in now, if Mr. Rosenstein calls me and asks me to come down here, I will come down here and you have it on tape and I will support at that time that you appoint Mr. Rosenstein to the city council because this is the state's person-like thing to do. You also need seven people on the council and you need them right away. You don't need to wait until March or April to get the hard business done that you need to do to pull the city together. I urge you to make an appointment tonight and to appoint your fourth place, your fourth place winner in the election in the sense that you received more than 11,000 votes, fewer than 100 votes behind the third place winner. Thank you. Ronald Roos is next, followed by Judy Abdo, Cheryl Kushner, and Louise Jaff. <clears throat> My name is Ronald Roos. I've been a Santa Monica resident for 10 years. Just echoing what some of the speakers have said before me, it would be unconscionable, I think, for this council to spend upwards of $150,000 on a special election, especially when there's such a mandate from the people as to what to do. Richard Bloom finished, at the moment, apparently he has finished a very close fourth in the election. It is clear the will of the people is that he serve the remainder of Asha Greenberg's seat. If it should come about, since I understand all the absentee ballots have not been counted, that's my understanding, if it should come about that he should overtake Mayor Holbrook, Richard Bloom could then resign, Mayor Holbrook could be appointed to that seat, so that both of them end up serving on this council, clearly the will of the people here. Um, I think it's evident that these two candidates should be on this council. If it's good enough for the Santa Monica electorate, I hope it's good enough for the city, Santa Monica City Council. Thank you. Judy Abdo, followed by Cheryl Kushner. I'm suffering from a uh, state of reality. And uh, so I'm not going to stand up here and suggest that you appoint the fourth person. I've talked with a number of you about that. And uh, you all know my feelings about that. But I, what I want, I know I didn't reach you. <laughs> What I would really like, beyond any, any discussion about what the, whether the fourth person should serve or not, is that you appoint somebody. And the, the reason for that is, of course, number one, that we shouldn't have an extra election when we don't need one. But my reason for that is, beyond money, it has to do with this community. We have just come through a very, very difficult election, and there are lots of bruised feelings, a lot of people who are feeling very, very bad. If you don't appoint somebody tonight or tomorrow night, or I guess Thursday is your last chance, then what we have is taking those bad feelings and then moving forward to whenever it is, March, whenever that is, and having this war continue. And I think this is a time in our community when we really need to be healing and we have some very serious issues that we have to deal with. One is education, the safety of our children, what are we going to do with children after school so that they're not on the streets. Another has to do with our neighborhoods that are in chaos particularly the Pico neighborhood, where people really need to have the attention of all of us. And I don't think that's going to happen in a good enough way if you drag out this fight for the next few months. So please, I know there must be people who has, whose names have not yet surfaced that you could agree on. Maybe if you ask them to just do it for two years and then not run, you can take the politics out of it but let's get somebody else on this council and move forward with the healing process. Thank you. 
The next speaker is Cheryl Kushner, followed by Louise Jeff and Frank Schweitzer. Hi, I'm Cheryl Kushner, a 20-year resident of Santa Monica. And I wanted to just say to you that we could use the money. <laughs> the library, we don't have this election, is one of the services in Santa Monica. But more seriously, um, I do believe that Richard Bloom would be a, a good person to fill this position. But if he, for some reason, is unpalatable to you because of your different political perspectives, then I would like to recommend that you consider someone who I think is really neutral, and that is Louise Jaffe, who has uh, chaired the Lifelong uh, Learning Community uh, project. I have had a great deal of uh, time to work with her during the library bond campaign and I have a great deal of respect for her. She has wonderful values and it, uh, her interest in the, uh, is very much for the city of Santa Monica and improving the community. So I just suggest that as another alternative. Thank you. Louise Jaff is next, followed by Frank Schweitzer and Sean Daniel. Uh, hello. I, um, I also think the fourth candidate is the appropriate choice, given the election. Um, I know this election was very difficult for all of you, but for Cheryl and for me, it's really been wonderful. The outcome was extremely gratifying, and we were going to come and say this anyway without this item being here, so I'm just going to slip it in, that we really would like to thank the entire community for the wonderful support for Prop X and Prop L, both of which passed with over 80%, which is really remarkable. And although we worked very hard on our respective campaigns separately and together, I'm sure that the six flyers that were sent out by the Prop X campaign did not bring in 80% of the vote. And we, those of us who worked on that campaign, really want to thank all of the candidates and all of the campaign parties who worked so diligently, everyone, throughout the election spoke in support of learning opportunities for our community. And that return is a return of unity. And that's a very strong basis of support in our community. And I hope that whatever seven people are sitting up there, that when we get past item 4A, we start remembering 80% and more supporting learning opportunities in our community and try to figure out what that means. because. Passing that bond is those bonds are not about building buildings. These are building opportunities, and we have to move towards that. Uh, I had been asked by several people if I would be willing to serve if it came to that, and I would be for the reasons that I have been serving in a different capacity. So thank you all for supporting um, our entire community through Prop X and Prop L. Frank Schweitzer, followed by Sean Daniel, Tom Pratt. And you have three late shits after that. Hi, Frank Schweitzer. I I'm going to mark this date. It's rare that I come here and say I'm at a loss. But uh, I I'm at a loss as to why this is being discussed. It it's just such a total no-brainer to me. I, I just can't imagine when you have this opportunity to see the third and fourth you know, overwhelmingly supported by the voters. Uh, it's inconceivable. To that uh, you would do anything but. I mean, it would just be such an affront to the democratic process, which you all propose to endorse. Uh, I, I'm sure that that's, you know, it's, it's like a hanging curveball. I mean, you're just going to have this wonderful opportunity to be nonpartisan and believers in democracy. I hope you will. Sean Daniel? Thank you very much for letting all of us express our opinions tonight. I moved to Santa Monica for its ability to uh, come up with innovative solutions to urban problems. And I think it's worth pointing out that Representative Henry Hyde has said that he will not pay attention to the elections. And ex-Representative Newt Gingrich took the same <laughs> position. I do not expect that the Council of Santa Monica will look on the voters in the same way and therefore, when it comes time to weighing what is fiscally responsible and democratically possible, they will turn to some process in which the four highest vote getters will be named to the city council. Thank you. Tom Pratt. Good evening. We have our, our whole family here. 
want to say that $150,000 is a lot of money to waste on a special election when that money could be used in a more productive manner. And Christopher reminded me that could go to the schools. Right, Chris? <coughs> yeah. Okay, so we understand that several people have applied for, for the city council member vacancy, and we really commend their, their interest in applying for the position. However, we feel that the voice of Santa Monica citizens can't be ignored. And in the recent election, Richard Bloom received 11,490 votes. And as of today, they're still counting. And we think it's rather obvious that Richard should be appointed to the vacancy. And Richard is a successful small business owner, he's a devoted family man, and he's dedicated to our community and would be a re wonderful representative of our people and as a council member. And so we urge you to set aside any differences that you may have and save these taxpayers a lot of money and also do the honorable thing and appoint Richard to the city council. We have three late chips left. I move to hear them for one minute each. Second. There's a motion and a second to hear late chips for one minute each. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, would you call those? Please? The last three speakers are Brian Hutchings, John Pitts, and Kathy Knight for one minute. Brian Hutchings. What passed, <clears throat> one of the things that passed was Proposition I, which is the uh, improved density in housing that uh, none of the candidates, including the SMUR ones and the, certainly the green ones, were willing to face forthrightly. You really have to, um, to do that while maintaining open space and so forth is not an easy problem, but it is doable. But um, as far as giving the, <laughs> conceding the, giving to Richard Bloom, I don't know, because, um, Maybe if I'd known the quid pro quo, what, what is the purpose of Asha Greenberg not conceding her seat until too late? Uh, I don't know. I'd like to find out, but um, maybe I'd have run harder or tilted at the windmill harder, as the case may be. But the hypothesis I developed in the course of coming to city council meetings that this council now has a de facto green majority because of the two teals, including Mr. Rosenstein, who goes so strangely, against the Greens, and yet votes for Green E. Marketing scam. John Petz is next. Uh, yeah, hi, good evening. As a longtime Santa Monica resident, I add my voice to the voice of all those who support appointing the fourth place candidate, whoever that is, including if it's Mayor Holbrook in, in terms of the final count. I think that is a no-brainer, as Frank Schweitzer said. However, if for some reason that can't be done or you refuse to agree to do that, I would like to support the candidacy of David Cole. David is the current president of Mid-City Neighbors. He is a person I've dealt with and worked with in the heat of battle. I find him to be a fair, open, even-handed gentleman who did a wonderful job of trying to rally and work with the neighbors on the St. John's issue to ensure that St. John's was developed in a way that was of the greatest benefit to the widest number of citizens. He worked to keep the playgrounds open here. He's a past PTA president. Uh, I found him to be not only that, but something that might be of interest to some of the council members, a conservative at heart, but with a heart. And in that way, sort of, I think, a, a nice middle ground of appointee. However, I do support the fourth place appointment. Kathy Knight is the last speaker. Um, good evening. We all heard in the last election a lot about how um, the American voters are turning out in smaller and smaller numbers to vote. And um, it's really sad. And I would ask you to please reward those of us citizens who did take the time to study the ballots, look at the candidate statements, and get out there and vote. Um, I hope you do support us and reward us for doing that. And I'd personally be very excited about having both Mayor Holbrook and Richard Bloom on the city council. I think it'd be a great city council. Thank you. The end. Any uh, questions? Mr. Rosenstein? A question for the city clerk. Um, maybe you could tell us what the uh, status is of the vote count, how many ballots we estimate are yet to be counted, and when we expect to have the election certified. <laughs> I 
I spoke with the county clerk this afternoon, and unfortunately, all that she could tell me was that they counted from last Friday, they counted approximately 150,000, oh, I'm sorry, 90,000 ballots, and that she estimates they have about 50,000 left. She could not give me a number. Countywide. Countywide. Yes, she could not give me a number as to how many of those are Santa Monica area ballots. Um, she, has, she hopes to be done by the 20th with a certified canvas. However, if they run into problems, it could go into uh, the following Tuesday, which would be 24th. Okay. Uh, and, and I guess this uh, sheet that we found in the back is the latest count as of this afternoon? Is that this afternoon, yes, that's correct. Okay. Now, one other question, that is, uh, if we were to follow the advice of some of the speakers and appoint person who now appears to be fourth, uh, and that person ended up winning as a result of the counting of the absentee ballots. What kind of situation would that put us in? If you appointed one of the candidates and the candidate won a four-year seat on the council, the candidate would have to make a choice of keeping one of the offices. Um, he or she could choose to keep the two-year appointment or to resign the two-year appointment and take the four-year seat. If they resign the the two-year appointment, that would be a brand new resignation and would trigger the 30-day uh, charter re requirement to fill the seat again. But wouldn't the same thing happen if they chose the, f the four-year term? In other words, we've already appointed to a two-year term. In other words, it doesn't really matter, does it? In other words, they, the person, if he was elected, You'd have to pick one or the other, but we'd still Correct. be one council member short, and That's then we'd have to go through the same process again. If, Either way. If the person um, chose to keep the two-year appointment and did not feel the... Did not accept the my, two term? As, as of right now, we would probably need another election to fill that seat. Or we can make an appointment. No, because that is not a resignation. Okay, so in either event, we would, we would, uh, we would be one short, and we, in one situation, we'd have the same procedure as now, where we'd have an option to choose somebody or go to an election. In the other situation, we would be required to have another election. That's okay. correct. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Genser? Well, I just want to clarify, that would only be if the person who was appointed to a two-year seat just declined to take the four-year seat if they if that person won the four-year seat. I mean, Correct. Right. So as long as the person who was elected the four-year seat agrees to take it, we wouldn't have an election. We would have particularly an appointment. You would have the 30-year, the 30-day... Um, <laughs> it feels that way. It seems that way. <laughs> we wish. No. Uh, yes, you would have your 30 days to make an appointment. So let me just make sure... I'm going to try and insert names here, which are a possibility, which has been discussed tonight by some of the speakers. But, so this is, and I'm not asking you to, in any way to endorse any particular people, but, but um, if, for example, if we did what many people spoke about tonight and um, had asked and appointed, say, Richard Bloom to the two-year seat, if, in fact, Mayor Holbrook then continued with his lead, he would just simply assume the four-year seat, or have the ability to, I mean, obviously, for any incoming candidate's their choice, I suppose, um, and if, though, Richard Bloom were appointed to your seat and he was actually uh, won the four-year seat, he at least would have the ability to resign the two-year seat, take the four-year seat, and the council could make an appointment in theory, conceivably. I mean, it's not, we would have a whole range of choices. We could appoint any registered voter in the city. We could appoint, again, the fourth place person in that scenario, which That's would correct. be Mayor Hober. That's correct. So we if that. we were to do that, we could have the ability to make sure both third and fourth place were on the count. That's, that's correct. That's Thank you. an accurate statement. Well, perhaps, perhaps I, I need to say this, that I'm not interested in being appointed. Um, I was asked that by the press uh, about 8 o'clock in the morning last Wednesday, and they said, uh, you think you'll seek the seat in March? I said, oh, no, no, no. I, placed my career before the voters and whatever they choose will be their choice and if they choose to elect somebody else i accept that 
I'm not interested in appointment. I'm not interested in running in March. So I just want to make that clear. Uh, you know, I don't. You know, if, if you were trying to think of some scenario, maybe you should think about the fifth person. You know, because you know it's just how you know it's just my choice. Okay. Any other comments? Well, I'll I'll start tonight. Um, okay. First of all, I want to thank all the people who have applied and expressed interest. Um, as I read through the application, I was impressed with they all had a record of contribution to the community, to their families, and work achievements. And what they all shared was an enthusiasm for public surface, service. And I do want to acknowledge them for their interest and actually their courage because they're putting their name forward in a really public venue, um, a public forum to apply for a job. Um, only one person can be appointed to that seat. And if we can get to an appointment tonight. But I do want to encourage all those folks who expressed interest and applied, especially the folks who are newcomers, um, to apply for our boards and commissions, to, to learn about the breadth of participation opportunities in the community, because um, there are people there who had some wonderful ideas and would, would really add to that. Um, we're going to go through a process tonight of nominating people. We do that with boards and commissions. Um, this is. And it is for a job. I mean, it's for a job. It's a job being up here. Uh, and, it's a, and we're going to be doing it in an open public arena. You know, mo even in an election, when people vote, when people vote for us, sometimes people will endorse us publicly and, and speak of their support. But most of the electorate makes that decision in a private fashion when they go to the polling booth. So today, we're going to make a job decision, though, if we can get there, in a really public forum. And we're going to discuss in a sense, people's names will be put up here in that public forum. Uh, most job interviews are, take place in private, and part of that is because we're all, we're all humans. We all have, we bring a set of strengths to the job, we bring a set of weaknesses to the job with us. And so I, I just want to start out by saying today that anyone who's nominated tonight and who does not prevail, um, I want them to understand it's not a statement about them. What this is about is trying to find a person to fit in this job at this particular point in time. And all of them have strengths, and they bring that to the city. And again, I hope and encourage their full participation. So having said that, I'd like to start with the nomination. Um, I was part of the election. Uh, I had no idea what the outcome would be. D certainly didn't expect it to be such a tight race. I mean, I, I had no expectations, I guess that's, that's the truth of it, uh, much less contemplating ahead of time that it was such a close race for, thirds, for third place. We've had many folks here speak tonight about the open seat and that it should be filled by, by a vote of the people. And as someone said, we here are sitting as a proxy of the people. We do that throughout our whole council tenure. We're sitting here representing people. As it gets further from the election, we have to always make those decisions based on people we talk to and a subset of folks who we get input from. But we're close to an election, so we've had a real strong voice we've heard from the community. We've heard today many people think that candidate should be the person in the fourth place position. And there is such a little spread of voters that it is, it does speak to me that there is support for this candidate. I think I, I will be nominating Richard Bloom. I will be doing that because I think it best reflects the will of the people. In addition, as folks have mentioned, there's a cost factor. We're talking about $130,000 to run a special election. That could be spent better, could be spent elsewhere, could be spent for our kids and our young people. Um, so I'll, I'll go for it. I'm going to nominate Richard Bloom. He's in fourth place. He has 11,490 votes. That's 1,700 votes ahead of the fifth place person. Mr. Bloom has undergone the greatest of public scrutiny in the last three months. He has been out there with all the candidates so people could make an evaluation and see, see what there was to see. He had the opportunity to ask questions, to listen to the pub candidate forums, to, again, the greatest amount of scrutiny, public scrutiny one can have in terms of putting their name forward for a city council seat. And another thing Mr. Bloom brings to this is he is an attorney. Um, we're not going to have that on the council anymore. We've lost Council Member Greenberg, who was an attorney, and Council Member Ebner is moving on to other challenges and opportunities and, and hopefully fun. You, you know, 
I don't remember being an attorney to be such a plus on this. No. Well, I don't but, remember right. brownie points or, 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 However, or bonus pay. Right. So. No, right. But at closed sessions and at open sessions, in closed sessions, you would comment. You do comment still about the perspective from a legal perspective. We have our city attorney staff, but we get another view, and that's what we're not going to have on this council. We're going to have lost, um, lost an attorney. And Mr. Bloom is a well-respected attorney, and I think he would bring that special expertise to, to the council. So um, that's my nomination is to that the council appoint Richard Bloom, uh, again, respecting the will of the electorate. Is it uh, the pleasure of the council that we vote on each person, one by one, or do we, or do we place other names in nomination now? Does anybody have a preference? Our typical process is to put names on the table and. Do we have a discussion? Well, we can have other names. I, we can have a discussion. We can do I, one by um, one. I don't plan to, to really discuss anyone unless someone asks. I don't know that person. Could you tell us a little bit about them, something like that? I think Richard Bloom has an excellent chance of winning this election. I'm told there's maybe 5,000 more votes out there. And uh, any other nominations? Ms. Ebner? No, I just want to share my, my reasoning on this issue. And I've gotten calls and access from a lot of folks. And I can see the clear logic of saying, put in the fourth place winner. Um, I did talk to people and did my own legal research. The problem with that is that we can't name a spot. We have to name a person. And I have been thinking about this. If Richard, and there are prop, as many as 5,000 votes out there, and with the number of votes in dispute, Richard Bloom could be elected, and then we would be in exactly the same position where we would have an empty seat on the council. Um, I'm a big believer in the, pro in, in the process. <coughs> the electorate, we had one speaker who was very, very eloquent um, earlier tonight. I can't say it any better than she said it. Uh, but we cannot, or I don't feel I can, appoint a position. I don't know who's going to win this election. I think they're both fine candidates. The votes haven't been counted. The fat lady hasn't sung, and it ain't over. So I cannot support a nomination for one of the people who, in fact, may win this election. I don't know. Nobody knows. And my crystal ball is not working this week. I put it along with the laptop computer in the council office, it just on the fritz. So I, I can't support this nomination, and it's not because I have anything at all against either Mr. Bloom or the voice of the people, my problem is, is we don't know what the voice of the people is yet. And if Mr. Bloom does win the election, then we'll be in exactly the same space in two weeks from now looking at the same decision. So I just wanted to make the record clear about my reasoning on this nomination. Mr. Rosenstein? Well, the, uh, the voters have given us uh, two methods to uh, fill the seat. One is for the council members to choose if they can, and the other method is for the voters to choose in the ballot box uh, if we can't. Uh, and my feeling is that when we were elected, we were elected to use our best judgment uh, to uh, make decisions. And uh, if we're unable to make a decision on that basis, then the voters will have the opportunity to do that. Uh, so with that in mind, I would like to nominate Susan Cloak. I'd just like to make a, a brief comment. Um, when uh, Mrs. Greenberg, Asha Greenberg, resigned, I kind of approached that along the lines of it's going to be tough to find someone who serves so well as Asha Greenberg. I think she's an extraordinarily popular member of the city council. Very bright lady. Always brought clarity to issues that sometimes were muddled or confused. And I think every one of us uh, 
really re regret her uh, decision to move away from the city. Uh, and so I kind of focused my thinking along the lines that uh, we need to look for someone to f finish the balance of the term that she was elected to and to represent her constituency, hopefully in the same style and the same, um, the same concerns and the same values that she had. Well, I'm told now that that's old fashioned thinking uh, because we had, you know, we, we have an election and we have uh, 10 people that run and, and, and there were wonderful people that ran and they finished all the way from one to 10. And, and of course, many of them received more votes than others, but there's an awful lot, these are all fine people and uh, it's just, that's the way it came out. So for, I think it's important to try and appoint someone to take Osha's seat and finish the term that, that she started. I mean, that's the way I view it. So I support uh, Susan. And if Susan isn't uh, supportable with four votes, or Richard, uh, then uh, I'm going to suggest some other people that we maybe should consider as well. Maybe we should, when we have a couple of people, maybe we should take a vote and see where we are. And then, yes, Mr. Rose. I just wanted to uh, echo uh, the portion of uh, Councilmember O'Connor's comments about the, uh, the fine people who have uh, applied. Uh, there's many good applicants among those who've applied and even some of those who haven't that are interested in the appointment. So it's as usual, uh, as often happens to us, we're faced with a lot of good choices and uh, we just have to choose one among them. So it brings us down to that. Yeah. Okay, why don't you, uh, clerk, please call a roll and we'll indicate the name of the person we can support right now and see if we have four votes for somebody. Mayor Pro Tem O'Connor. Bloom. Councilmember Feinstein? Bloom. Councilmember Genster? Bloom. Councilmember Rosenstein? Cloak. Councilmember Ebner? Abstain. Mayor Holbrook? Cloak. Okay. It's 3 right. 2 with an abstention. All right. Any other nominations? Rosenstein? I'd love to uh, nominate the chair of the Planning Commission, Kathy Wermer. I'd like to nominate Richard Bloom. Any other nominations? I want to call a roll again. No, I just want to make a comment, Mr. Genzer. Yeah, I haven't spoken so far. I have talked with a number of people over the last week or so, or less than five days. Um, heard from a number of people. Microphone. Oh. My mic is on, but let me. Can people hear me now? We need some more volumes. I'm told I should put it down. Is this better? Thank you. Uh, about time I learned how to work this thing. Um, I've, I've heard from a lot of people over the last, I guess, five days or so, and I think the, virtually every comment that I've heard, including someone stopping me on the street today, uh, when I was just walking down the street, who I didn't know before this, uh, has said comments similar to most of the speakers tonight. And that is, I think it's two things I want to say about that. One is what people said, respect the will of the voters here. And the second one is what one person said to me, it was actually in a telephone comment, said, you don't, they actually use a different word, but I'll, I'll clean it up a little bit. You don't mess with democracy. And that's what we shouldn't do here. And I think that we all can imagine a lot of possible scenarios but I think we really have to respect the voters in this case. And when one looks at the votes, there was Ms. O'Connor, who was way ahead of everybody, and then three candidates who really were very, very close with each other, and then a Ms. McCune, Dr. Holbrook, and Mr. Bloom, and then a significant drop-off before we got to the other candidates. I think that sends a real clear message of the intent of the voters after, as one of, at least one of the speakers said, not a fairly intense political campaign where people really were put under scrutiny and, and looked at. And I think that this is the time for the council members to rise to the occasion to uphold democracy here, uphold the will of the people, and let's put our politics behind. And I want to say, now this clearly would be up to Dr. Holbrook, but if things were to change, if we were to appoint Mr. Bloom tonight, and if for some reason 
he were elected to the four-year seat, I have every reason to believe that he would take that four-year seat. That's what he ran for. And then we would have a vacancy with a two-year term. And I want to say, even though and it's no secret that my, my philosophy on many items are things are different from Dr. Holbrook's, but I really believe strongly that I would support appointing Dr. Holbrook for that two-year seat if that were to happen. Again, it would be subject to you know what you wanted to do at the time, and I hear what you say now, and I would obviously we would have to respect that. But I think that's really our job here, not to look at each of our own um, political point of view, but to, to do what really <coughs> is our job here, which is to represent the people of this community. And I think they've spoken very, very clearly. Any other comments? Anybody else want to comment? Councilmember Ebner. Councilmember Rosenstein? Wermick. Councilmember Genser? Bloom. Councilmember Feinstein? Bloom. Mayor Pro Tem O'Connor? Bloom. Mayor Holbrook? Uh, Kathy Wermick. 3 2, when it's an issue. Councilmember Feinstein? Yeah, I haven't uh, spoken yet. And as we move to round three, <laughs> I'd like to nominate Richard Bloom. Um, <laughs> I just want to respond to three things I've, I've heard here. Uh, Mayor Holbrook talked about filling a slot that uh, former Council Member Greenberg had, and I think there's, there's some merit there. He also mentioned the fact that we've just had an election and sometimes priorities change over the course of four years, and we have to take cognizance of, cognizance of that, indeed. Uh, there's times we have referendums uh, and initiatives from residents. A lot of things change over a four-year term. I think we also have to remember that we are all very diverse uh, people as human beings, and as a council, sometimes we vote 7-0, sometimes 6-1, 5-2, 4-3, and not always in the same combinations. And uh, Councilmember Greenberg, while generally from a certain perspective, certainly was in most of those uh, combinations in, on one side or another. And in some ways, uh, there are some similarities that, that we've heard about Mr. Bloom as uh, former council member Greenberg. He's an attorney, she was an attorney, he's a homeowner, uh, she was a homeowner. Uh, he's a fiscal conservative, she was a fiscal conservative. So I think public safety, um, there's another angle where I think that they shared a lot in common. So I don't know necessarily that given the shift over time and a lot of the similarities that Mr. Bloom has that he wouldn't necessarily address a lot of the issues that former Council Member Greenberg talked about. Council Member Rosenstein talked about the dual nature where we have the option of both a special election and a charter. And indeed, we do have the ability uh, as a council and that's come out of the democratic process that our charter has to give a, any council the right to appoint. But it's rare that a opportunity to fulfill a vacancy comes on the heels of an election. And while we could fall back to a point, I think in this very unique instance where the third and fourth place finishers were so close, my instinct is not to go to that second fallback position to a point. Maybe if it was a year from now, a point appointment makes sense, but immediately after an election, first council meeting after an election, what is the karma, the, the synchronicity on, on that? That's, it's pretty remarkable. And then finally, uh, Councilmember Ebner talked about how, indeed, she felt, generically speaking, the idea of going for the fourth place finisher was the right way to go, but that it's hard to do that now because we don't yet have that option because the election still hasn't been decided. It's unfortunate that it hasn't been decided and or that our charter doesn't give us another 15 days. It gives us 30 days, not 45 days. Um, but that's where we are right now. And sometimes you make the lemonade out of lemons. Uh, I actually, my analysis of the write-in number, excuse me, of the um, absentee numbers is there's not another 5,000 ballots out there. There were 5,600 uh, absentee ballots cast in the 1996 election, according to our own staff report for this evening. And my count right now puts it more around 3,000 votes that have already been cast. So I'm expecting maybe there's another 3,000 or so out there. It still means the election may swing or not, but I think that we have to go forward tonight with the information that we do have and the information that we do have 
is that Mayor Holbrook is ahead, uh, Mr. Bloom is in fourth place, and Councilmember Genzer has suggested a scenario where it is at least theoretically po possible if Mayor Holbrook was interested where we could still combine the two in a way of having them both up there. Up there. So for that reason, for this third round, I'm still 100% um, behind Mr. Bloom and think that is the right way to go for our community. <coughs> Rosenstein. Well, I, I find it strange that the word democracy is being thrown around when we're using a procedure that was established by the voters. Uh, and uh, we're also jumping to conclusions and, you know, to, to appoint uh, somebody who's still in a contested election. Uh, uh, it just seems to me to be... Uh, very impractical. Um, and given the fact that we do have the uh, opportunity and the authority of the voters to make the appointment, uh, I just wanted to say that uh, I think that it's very important, it's not certainly 100% um, important, but I think it's very important that we try to add to the number of women on this council. Uh, and we have the opportunity to do that. Uh, I wouldn't say that I would appoint a woman who is not qualified or capable of handling the role, and I would not say that I would not support a man under any circumstances. I would under some circumstances. But in the situation that we're presented with today, I think, uh, in my mind at least, it's very important that we try to uh, pick a woman to fill this seat uh, to reflect the uh, very important uh, role that women play in our community and uh, not represented for a variety of reasons on the council. Uh, given that my first two nominees didn't make it, I'd like to make a third nomination, and that is Sherry Davis. Okay, we have uh, nominees of Sherry Davis and Richard Bloom. Uh, Mayor, if I could, I'd like to clarify a point. Um, on, the, on, on the estimated number of absentees that has been discussed, as of last Friday, the county clerk estimated, and she did say that it was a very rough estimate, that there, were, there might be 5,000 votes still out there for the area. Um, after today's count, there were approximately 1,400 votes counted in just for the Prop L uh, vote. So those many votes have come in. Also, the estimate of the 5,000 includes the school district. So you would need to discount some numbers that would just be for the school district and would not uh, include the city. School district includes Malibu. Right. Just ask, when, when you say 1,400, was that just today's or Fridays and today's? Today's. Thank you. And do you know how many were on Friday? Um, on Friday, they counted about 2,500, but after counted, counting those, she estimated that there might be 5,000. I see. So that if we use that number, there's about 3,600 left, roughly. That's it's the best right. Yes. Well, Thank you. well actually, and, and that's number still very rough estimate. Just, just to, since we're talking about the numbers for a moment, if you're saying there are about 1,400, which subtracting some for the school district, um, the 2,500 <laughs> number that she gave to you on Friday, because as you know, I spoke to her right after right. you did, was the total number of votes, not the number of voters, and thus. That actually needs to be divided by three or three and a half. If it was by three, then it assumes everybody's casting three votes. But I think we could assume that that's maybe 1,000 voters rather than 2,500 voters. But then the other number we'd want to add is how many people cast absentees that were counted at the beginning of the election last Tuesday night. I'm sorry. I... No, in other words, the ones that came in when we were watching the initial that's counts on television. The ballots are on the ballots. Those are already included. Right, but if we're going to subtract from the 5,600 that we had in 1996, if we have 1,400 from last Friday, excuse me, 1,400 today, if we had about 1,000 voters on Friday, and then whatever we had that were in as of the beginning of the election on Tuesday, that's probably 3,500 or something. So anyway, just so we still don't know what, for sure what's going to happen, but there do, do seem to be in. I just wanted to clarify that the 5,000 number was as of last Friday, and that changed after today's count. It's still a very rough estimate. Dr. Rosenstein. Yeah, I just wanted to comment for people listening to this who may not understand what we're talking about, and that is that 
when people cast ballots uh, late in the, uh, before the election, but, but to, uh, closer to the election, uh, uh, cast them uh, as absentee ballots, or I think even walked them in and handed in their absentee ballots, uh, the county just dumps them into a big pile. Uh, they don't know where they come from, and they work their way through them, and that's what they're doing now. So every few days we get an update, uh, but the county has had, uh, what, a couple hundred thousand ballots all together from all over the county, and they're working their way through them, and that's uh, the reason that we really don't know how many ballots are left out there. The early absentee ballot, people who vote absentee early, they get counted right away at the beginning of the count, but the yes, later the ones get counted later. Yes, that voted absentee and mailed in their ballots prior to the election, they were counted initially. There, there's maybe one little known thing I have to add is that my precinct is the only one in Santa Monica that does not have a polling place. And we always have to vote absentee. Most of us just miss voting. So virtually everybody goes to a voting place and turns in their absentee ballot just for the fun of going in and voting. It's a, kind of a strange thing, but it's been going on for 20 years now. Yeah, which way? Call the roll. Uh, on two nominations, one for Sherry Davis and one for Richard Bloom. Mayor Pro Tem O'Connor? Bloom. Councilmember Feinstein? Bloom. Councilmember Gensler? Bloom. Councilmember Rosenstein? Davis. Councilmember Abner? Davis. Mayor Holbrook? Davis. Three to two and one abstention. Mr. O'Connor. Okay. I'd like to nominate Louise Jaffe for the council seat and briefly speak about what I think she brings to this. Ms. Jaffe has been active in our schools and the PTA, and besides that, she has worked tirelessly to move forward a concept of lifelong learning, um, reaching out to the community, to the broad community of Santa Monica, and building, actually, a, a wide spectrum, a coalition of folks, um, from support, gaining support for that project from the business community um, through a range of organizations in Santa Monica and individuals, and thus brings to that in her neutral position as um, PTA Council President and um, supporting the Lifelong Learning Project, um, a neutrality as well as broad community support. She also, from my observations of her throughout moving their project forward and representing the schools, has um, been able to grasp the issues, analyze the issues, clearly study them, put the effort that's required into it, and I believe she would do a good job on the council. Well, I made my statement before. I'm not going to repeat it, but I, I, I do feel very strongly that the voters have spoken here, and I want to again nominate Richard Bloom. I just want to make one other addition to what I said before and that it is, it is true that the Charter allows us to make an appointment. But I think there clearly are, and just speaking hypothetically, clearly that you know, we made some appointment, even though we would legally or technically have the power to do it, that people would find unacceptable, just because of the person's qualifications or background or whatever. I'm not suggesting that of any people whose names have been mentioned tonight, but just possible. So clearly it indicates that we have to use judgment as we make, cast our votes to make an appointment. And council members may disagree on this. So that's why it's a judgment. There's no exact science. But I would just hope council members will think very clear, think about what has been said tonight by so many members of the public, often members of the public we don't normally hear from, about how we need to respect, how important it is to respect the direction the voters gave us just one week ago. If it were a year after the election, or even six months after the election, one might say conditions have changed. But the voters gave us information about what they think should happen just one week ago, and I think it's important that we respect that. Ms. Rose. Well, I think we should be frank and, and recognize that most of the speakers came to talk for the people that they supported during the election, and that's certainly a reasonable thing to do, but that's, that's what I heard tonight. I'd like to offer yet another nominee. I'd like to offer a nomination, Jean Cedillos. All roll. And the nominations are Louise Jaffe, Ken, 
I'm sorry, Richard Bloom and Jean Cedillos. Councilmember Ebner. Cedillos. Councilmember Osteen. Abstain. Councilmember Genser. Bloom. Councilmember Feinstein. Bloom. Mayor Pro Tim O'Connor. Jaffe. Mayor Holbrook. Cedillos. One to two to two. <laughs> Well, I have to tell you, I never contemplated that I might even come to a council meeting on perhaps my last or second to last night on a council and appoint myself to a term. I mean, I, I wouldn't do that on a question of ethics, let alone, I mean, you know. Well, I know, but I, I mean, that's almost, you know, what you were talking about. I mean, I, I crazy. Okay, any more nominations? Moving right along. Any more nominations, Ms. Connor? Okay, I'll try Louise Jaffe again. Okay. Yeah, I, I, on principle, I would rather have people elected in an election than appointed, but I'm going to appoint Clyde Smith. He's been a leader in the community for many, many years. Uh, sorry, nominate. Duh. Uh, it's been a long day, folks. Sorry. Um, he's been a leader in the community for many years. He's a leader in the Pico neighborhood. It has long been my wish that we have someone representing people of color on the council and the minority um, or majority, I guess, uh, populations of Santa Monica. And uh, I think that uh, Mr. Smith would would serve honorably in this capacity. We have two folks nominated, Ms. Jackie and Mr. Smith. Any other nominees? Chancellor. If I can nominate Richard Bloom. Okay. Any other nominees? You call a roll, please. Mayor Pro Tem O'Connor. Jaffe. Council Member Feinstein. Bloom. Council Member Genser. Bloom. Council Member Osenstein. Abstain. Councilmember Ebner. Smith. Mayor Holbrook. Smith. One to two to two. Rosenstein. I'd like to make a motion that we uh, hold a special election to fill the seat on April 27th. I'd like to uh, make a substitute motion. I think that we perhaps need to rethink this. This is a very important decision. I'd like to suggest that we continue this discussion until Thursday evening, the time that's, um, we, you know, we can set and assuming that motion passes. Um, because I think that we all need to go back and think about our positions and come back and see if we can reach consensus about what's good for the community. I see. I'm going to vote for Councilmember Genzer's motion because I believe it's not only a question of us continuing to think for two more days, but I think now that the public has had a chance to watch this for a night, that many members of the community may have additional input for us, and that wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing either. So I would be happy to make myself available on Thursday night. Is this Thursday? Mm -hmm. can't be here. And I would, I would make an amendment to Councilmember Genser's motion that if Thursday night doesn't work for council members, that Wednesday night uh, also be an option. Fine. Okay, there's a substitute motion. Any other comments? Did you want to comment? Well, I, I won't vote for this motion. I, uh, I don't see any reason to believe the results would be any different. I think we've made a real effort to try and resolve this, and uh, we've been unable to, so I think we'll have to face facts and uh, have a special election. Okay, the uh, clerk, the motion before us will be to uh, meet again two nights from now.
Meet on Thursday or on Wednesday if it's not. Uh, well, let's try and do the concept of continuing. Then we can okay, the motion get the votes is, for that. We can figure about the date and the time. All right. Then the motion is to continue this item to either tomorrow night or the night after. Mayor Pro Tem O'Connor? Yes. Councilmember Feinstein? Yes. Councilmember Genser? Yes. Councilmember Rosenstein? No. Councilmember Abner? No. Mayor Holbrook? No. Three three. So the motion failed. We should say the motion the failed. The motion failed. All right, we're back to the motion I made, I guess. Uh, I would just. So the motion failed. We should say the motion the failed. The motion failed. All right, we're back to the motion I made, I guess. Uh, I would just like to be reassured that that date is not in the middle of. Easter, religious holiday, or Santa Monica school spring break. I mean, frankly, I don't know. That would be that would be worse. Well, it used to be assumed that spring break and Easter vacation were coterminous, and I'm not sure that's true anymore. I, well, I, I e Easter is Sunday the 4th of April, so the 27th is considerably away from that. The 6th would be a problem, you know, conceivably would be a problem. I'm, I'm fairly certain that the schools don't break during that week any longer. I know the parochial schools probably do, but I don't think the public schools do. Sure. But. What's the phone number here? Why are you no. One of the school board members? This, I understand. I'm being. No, 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 no. I'm being told that the spring break ends and school begins again on uh, Monday, April the 12th. Okay. We could have just called any hotel in Palm Springs and found that out. <laughs> Would you like me to call the roll on the main motion? Any more comments on? Oh, on, on Councilmember Rosenstein's? Yes. Yeah, uh, I yeah I want to make a, a, a comment. Uh, I'll, I'm going to be voting no on this motion um, for two reasons. Uh, one reason is that if it doesn't pass, I'm, I'm going to make uh, another nomination myself. But also, I believe that a special election is an unfortunate uh, occurrence for this community if it hap has to happen for the reasons that former uh, Mayor Abdo spoke about and others that we've heard tonight. But in addition, uh, for all the conversation we've heard tonight about democracy, special elections are notorious for low voter turnout. And I believe that if we're going to set a date, one thing that we are, should be considering to be responsible to the concept of democracy is to look at the idea of a weekend election on either a Saturday or a Sunday or both. Most civilized democracies in the world do th these sort of things. It increases turnout together with proportional representation. And I think that consulting with local clergy on both what a Saturday, Sunday, or Saturday and Sunday election would mean, as well as with our own staff for the technical aspects, is something that we should be looking at. So I wouldn't want to do anything more tonight if we cannot come to a, a vote, other than directing our staff to look at the possibility and at a subsequent council meeting set a date. So I'm going to vote no for that reason, and then if the uh, motion does not pass, I will make still another uh, nomination. I may ask a question of the uh, city attorney. Do we have the option to consider setting a special election at some future council meeting? I think you'd need to be real quick about it. The charter's mandatory. It says you shall, set a, you shall cause an election to occur. I don't think there would be any terrible consequence of 
waiting a very short period of time to do that. But I think there are risks, some of which are legal, attendant upon your delaying much longer than that. So if your question, was your question, could we wait one council meeting to do that? Uh, yes. I mean, for example, what if the council uh, didn't want us an election, didn't take this matter up until January? So. I mean, you still... If the council didn't take the matter up again until January, I can imagine various possibilities. I think that a taxpayer in the city could bring a lawsuit to compel the city to do, council to do what the charter says it has to do. I'm sure no one would want things to come to that, but I think that could happen. Um, and so I think the safest course for the council would be to rapidly obtain whatever information it might need to pick a date and do that at the next council meeting. What date is that? I'm sorry. Next council meeting. November 24th. Two weeks. Oh, it's still be the same council. Two weeks. All right. Oh, all right. That, that answers my well, question. Well, but it is also true that your appointment power ends Thursday. Mm -hmm. So at that point, you'd only be talking about when to conduct a special election. Okay. The motion before us then is shall the city conduct a special election on April 27th. The roll? Please. Council Member Ebner? Yes. Council Member Ossesting? Yes. Council Member Genser? No. Council Member Feinstein? No. Mayor Potem O'Connor? No. Mayor Holbrook? Yes. It fails 3 3. Feinstein? Yeah. Um, with some reluctance for the change, but not for the person. I'm going to nominate a, a, a new person, and I believe very strongly that while we have the power of appointment, that the unique set of circumstances uh, around this preceding election and its proximity to the time of appointment overwhelmingly suggests that the right thing to do is appoint Mr. Bloom. Uh, I voted that way on several rounds, and we haven't been able to do so, even though we've heard from many members of the community tonight, and in fact, it's in phone calls the last couple of days. I also believe that spending taxpayers' money unnecessarily is not for the good of the community. And as former Mayor Abdo spoke about, keeping the wounds open for four or five months that we should be healing right now is not in our best interest as well. So for that reason, I'm going to uh, move in the spirit of compromise to join uh, Mayor Pro Tem O'Connor, who earlier nominated Louise Jaffe, and do so uh, myself. And the thing that I'm going to just, I think, repeat here, um, we've been asked by some people in the public to get beyond politics, and one of the things that this council has done, this council and preceding councils has done is support our school district, support education in this community, and the fact that we had two education-related bond measures which got over 80% speaks very loudly that there's a consensus around that. Ms. Jaffe has <coughs> played a very, very significant role in the Lifeline Learning Project, which has built coalitions across many political lines, which rarely get built. And I think in that spirit, uh, if we cannot go with Mr. Bloom, but want to avoid putting the public through a special election and all the financial, spiritual, and emotional costs, I, I'm nominating uh, Louise Jaffe. Answer. Can I nominate Richard Bloom? Nomination. Ms. Stewart, would you call a roll again? Member Ebner? Staying. Council Member Osenstein? I just want to say Ms. Jeffy has done an amazingly admirable job in what in developing the project the lifelong learning, lifelong <laughs> learning community, and I admire her very much for that. But in exercising my judgment about who should be on the council, I will abstain. Councilmember Genser? Bloom. Councilmember Feinstein? Jaffe. Excuse me, Councilmember Feinstein? Jaffe. Mayor Potem O'Connor? Jaffe. Mayor Holbrook? Abstain. Two to one, three abstentions. Feinstein. Mayor Holbrook, I'd like to make a motion to direct our staff to look at the feasibility of holding an election 
on a Saturday and or Sunday within the proximity of the date that Councilmember Rosenstein, the Tuesday that he spoke of before the 27th. Can I ask you, I, I didn't understand if you meant holding a, an election over a two-day period or, or either e Either Saturday. Saturday or Sunday or both there or is, two day. There is no provision in the elections code for holding an election over a two-day period. If then we were to the do first that, question. <laughs> yeah. we would have to um, adopt an ordinance setting the procedures for such an election. Okay, then to look at the possibility Saturday or Sunday and or to direct staff to prepare an ordinance to allow us to do Saturday and Sunday, if that's indeed possible. Ms. Lebner, then Mr. Ginsburg. Yeah, I would have, just throwing this out, I would oppose that because if we hold it on a Saturday, that will exclude all observant Jews. If we hold it on a Sunday, I don't know what it would do to the Gentile okay. community. But I was trying to finish what I was saying, and I'll, I'll, part the end of, and the end of my motion was, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. The, and the, the end of my motion was to consult, as I had said a few minutes ago, with local clergy about the appropriateness of both days so that we could be informed as to the concerns that you're raising. Okay. Um, I, I, you can consult with a clergy, but I've been a Jew, oh, more than half a century now. And I know that Orthodox Jews will not vote from Friday sundown to Saturday sundown, and, and that gets pretty late in the day. And as we've learned, there is mail-in. Um, as the other point that I want to make is, I don't know anybody who has a busier schedule than I do. There's nobody in my life, except for maybe Bob, that has a busier schedule than I do. Yeah, I don't think so, guys. Um, I managed to vote. And I managed to vote on Election Day, which in my experience has been a Tuesday. Uh, and I think that the cost, and if this motion should pass, I would also want to report on what it would cost to open a polling place on a weekend to hire or recruit people to staff that and whether or not you know the, um, the election codes even provide for that. We've received clearance from the county that an election can be held on a Saturday. The cost would probably be probably be slightly higher due to having people coming in over, over a weekend. Um, and that is, I don't believe the cost would be very significant, but that there, there would be an added cost. I do not know what the additional cost would be for holding a two-day election that would require having all the precincts in the city staff for a two-day um, two period, and I do not know what the costs are for that. I think we would also, and I'll ask the city attorney to jump in, um, we would need to have some kind of direction from you as to the two-day holding of the election, some type of procedure, since this would probably be a first. I think as you suggested a moment ago, we would probably need to change our municipal code, which at least in theory can be done on an emergency basis. Mr. Lawrence points out that procedures, procedures would have to be undertaken to secure the ballots over a two-day period as well, which is quite different than a one-day election. Correct. Mr. Genzer? Well, I think it's always good to get information before you make any kind of decision like this. I personally wish we weren't making this decision, but it looks like that's the direction we're heading. So I think getting information is always good. I just want to get a little bit broader range of information. The motion was framed to do it in the time frame that Mr. Rosenstein uh, suggested. I think that may prove to be right. My instinct is we shouldn't leave a seat open so long and that we should move more quickly. But I think we need to get more information about a range of dates, ranging from the dates the clerk put in, which are the earliest possible one. I mean, I'm not advocating the one that she says would be administratively difficult because of uh, consultants' use, but say from, I don't remember the exact date, but the first date she recommends and moving forward, that range of dates and let's get information about that and and let's rather than just each of us speculating about what holidays there are and things like that ask the staff to go back and look at that let's get the information um, let's not just try and figure it out verbally tonight let's get the information it'll be in a staff report so the public can comment on it and let's let's pick a date with the full range of information that's so why i just like to request that the, the motion that's be friendly expanded to 
to that kind of question, and including. I think it's important to get the information about weekend. I don't know if all of supported support it or not, but let's find out. Rosenstein. Well, it's an interesting idea. I don't feel comfortable supporting it for this upcoming election. I think that to make such a dramatic change in our election habits and procedures uh, is something that we ought to give an awful lot of care and thought to. Uh, and some attempt to study whether it really would improve turnout. I could see a lot of situations where it wouldn't, given the kind of hectic uh, and unusual schedule so many of us all have. Uh, so I would think that that's something that should be carefully studied, maybe sh should involve a lot of public outreach in the community, public discussion, public workshops, and things like that, and should be considered down the road. But to do it on relatively short notice uh, I think would be a mistake, so I won't support the motion. Yeah, just a couple of comments, um, both on what Councilmember Rosenstein said and, and um, Councilmember Ebner. Um, asking for information, of course, isn't usually a, a, a dangerous thing, and I think that if Councilmember Rosenstein feels the way he does, then in two weeks he could vote no and we wouldn't go ahead and do something on a weekend. I think we looked at the emergency ordinance for the Monster Mansions with a public hearing in August, and we had great turnout, and we went ahead and did something that was pretty significant, and I don't think that uh, having the community come and tell us whether they think a weekend uh, voting or not is so much more complicated than the Monster Mansions, so I'm not unconfident about our process here to accomplish that. Uh, so I, I would hope that we would still be interested in the information and of course if we gather information one of the things we'd find is that dozens of countries do this and they have higher voter turnout and that might be something that instructs us. Uh, as far as a, a small additional cost, I think since we're going through the very unfortunate necessary evil to have a special election, I would hope that we wouldn't be penny wise and pound foolish and since special elections mean lower turnout if a weekend election costs a little bit more, it's worth looking at that now because what we're talking about is having the people express themselves. And if it means that another 5,000 people are going to vote because working people who maybe can only squeeze in between 6 and 8 at night on a weekday now can have a whole Saturday or Sunday when they're not worried about childcare and getting home from work, etc., can express themselves democratically, I think that's something that's worth looking at. Well, I find it interesting that uh, extensive public process uh, may, I guess, depend on what kind of outcome we want. Uh, I uh, remember when we were discussing rezoning North of Montana, some of us wanted to notify the entire uh, neighborhood of people affected, and we decided, the council majority at that time decided not to do that. So I guess uh, public process and public input and a lot of care and thought for things is important sometimes and not important other times. Answer? Well, I think the council should not. I think the council should not be debating this now. And I think we all should let calm down, cool down a little bit, and let's just get some information. We can all make our, our decision um, in two weeks. But I think the thing is to get information. And we, it's not usually a controversial item for the council to ask for information. You know, the information can be gotten whether it's through council vote or not. So I don't know that it's really critical that we debate this so much. I think it's a courtesy to each other to try and say, let's try and get information so we can all be on the same page with information. And then we can cast our votes. Shouldn't be controversial. Doesn't commit us to any vote. Doesn't commit us to any policy. Let's just move forward. And you know, if we don't, if we can't get the request for information, people will just have to get it on their own, ask staff to do a little research, which typically they'll do, it's not too extensive, and we'll, they'll just have to bring it here, but then people won't have the advantage of it, having it in the packet, and having it available for the public to comment. I don't see that there's any big problem with getting it. Let's just decide, we're not, clearly there aren't, it seems to be clear, maybe I'm mistaken here, there aren't the votes to set an election day tonight. So we're going to continue it till our next meeting, I, it seems to me, that's my guess about the way things happen. That's probably a done deal. What are we arguing about? The argument can come in two weeks when we have information. Let's just move on. The motion before us is to study potential voting on weekends and explore, I believe, 
other dates that might surround the dates suggested by the city clerk of April the 6th, April the 27th, and March 16th. Is that fair? That's what I understand. You want information on holding an election on a Saturday or on a Sunday or a two-day election on the cost, on any actions that council might need to take on all the available dates from the closest one available through the end of April? Yeah, including Tuesday. Um, and are you including in there coming back with an ordinance setting procedures for a two-day election? If that's necessary to do on the 24th, although on the 24th we could just decide to then direct the ordinance. I mean, I don't know what's necessary. So I guess that's part of the research. All right. Council Member Ebner? No. Council Member Rosenstein? No. Council Member Genser? Yes. Council Member Feinstein? Yes. Mayor Potomac O'Connor? Yes. Mayor Holbrook? No. It fails 3-3. Three, three. Excuse me, uh, if no. I could interject, you have a request from a pro se to speak as his, under his item 13A before 9 p.m. due to disability and chronic pain. Mr. Genzer? Well, council members, like whether we any, any of us individually want it or not, we all have these dates. Looks like a week. Next, I mean, next meeting. Sorry. Mr. Genzer? Well, council members, like whether we any, any of us individually want it or not, we all have these dates. It looks like it's getting continued to next week. It looks like we don't next, have votes. Next, I mean, next meeting, I'm sorry. It looks like we don't have votes to direct staff to get some information about it. So it's going to come back. And I think we should just accept that. And um, I'm sorry that we don't have the votes to get information so we can have a staff report for the public to look at and give us their input on. Um, but whatever happens, it's going to come back. And let's, maybe we should just move on. And I respect the fact that we don't have four votes to try and get us to be informed on this decision. And I think that's too bad, but we don't. And let's move forward. And I move that, suggest that we move the agenda, recognizing that this item will be continued. The issue of calling a special election will be on our agenda for our next meeting. Can we take a break? Oh, that'd be fine with me. I'd like to make a, a, a final motion before we leave this item. The motion is, is that we ask the clerk to explore other Tuesday opportunities looking at dates. This would not include the option of voting on a Saturday or Sunday. That could be a voice vote. I have another motion after that, too, by the way. Is there a second? I'll second that. Well, brief, briefly, I agree with uh, Councilman Rosenstein. I don't think that this is a time to blaze a new trail through Saturday and Sunday voting. I don't mind looking at the calendar to see if we can find a more appropriate date to hold a special election and look at calendars to make sure we're not excluding people because of a religious holiday or semester break or something like that, which may take a significant amount of our voters out of the city with their families um, for a holiday or something like that in the spring. I'm all willing to look at that. I just don't see the point of going through an exercise for having elections on Saturday or Sunday. That's all I'm saying. I appreciate your support and move on. Any other comments? Okay, let's just call a roll on that, then we can take a break. Council Member Ebner? Yes. Council Member Rosenstein? Yes. Council Member Genser? No. Council Member Feinstein? No. Mayor Putnam O'Connor? No. Mayor Holbrook? Yes. It fails 3 3. Rosenstein? Uh, I'd like to make a request uh, that we give direction to staff. Uh, this is on another issue, but it sort of follows from this. Uh, it appears that there's a possibility in the next few months that there may be, from time to time, tie votes on other issues. Uh, and our rules, as I understand them, as I read them, our rules really uh, assume that there's going to be seven council members. Uh, and we have rules like if, if something comes up and it doesn't pass, which would include a tie vote, then it can't come back for a year and things like that. And it, uh, it may be a situation that we could get tied up in knots dealing with a lot of important business. So I just wondered if we could ask staff to look at our rules and come back to us if they have any suggestions about uh, how to handle potential uh, tie vote situations in the future. Ms. O'Connor, Ms. Ms. O'Connor wisely suggests that we might take a break now, and I think excuse that's a wise suggestion, and I second that. Wait, I, Excuse me, I, Mayor. Council members, if I could. I don't know if 
we need to have anything for the record specifying that there is no appointment made and that there will be an election called since we will not be meeting prior to the 13th do we need anything on record well, I assume the minutes are going to reflect that no appointment was made and the second part was what exactly whether we needed to have anything on record before we took a break if you feel that the minutes are sufficient then that's fine I think the minutes will probably reflect that no appointment has been made and at the moment no election has been called and I, my understanding is that the matter of calling the election is going to be continued to the next Yeah, let's, meeting. why don't we just direct that, 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 that item of setting a special election date will be carried over to our next meeting in two weeks. Okay, all in favor of that, please say aye. 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 